بارك الله فيكم جزاك الله خير الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد يوافينا ما يكافئ مزيد الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد يوافينا ما يكافئ مزيد الحمد لله Allah bless mashallah everyone that's here today and Allah um, gaze upon us inshallah the gaze of lutf of kindness and rahmah inshallah and a gaze that inshallah overwhelms us and then overflows to inshallah the entire ummah of al mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam um, many times when um, the scholars of our tradition they commence uh, speeches or the like they say alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al islam wa kafa biha min ni'mah that all praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings of islam and this in and of itself suffices as what? This supreme, the supreme blessing. The, the fact that we're people of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And one thing that it gives us being from people of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, being people who are Muslim, it gives us a very clear understanding of the world. Right? That if we're connected to our tradition, if we're connected to learning our faith, it helps us make sense of the world that which we, we occupy. And the world that which we occupy has been defined in very clear terms by Al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, "Dunya mil'una, mil'una ma fiha illa dhikr Allah wa ma wala wa alimun wa muta'allim." That the world and everything that resides within the world is what accursed. Mil'una ma fiha, everything that resides within it is accursed illa dhikr Allah, except for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa taala. وَالْعَالِمٌ وَمُتَعَلِّمٌ Someone who's either imparting knowledge or someone who is learning knowledge. And so we learn from these understandings that from inception, this world is a world of what? Trials and tribulations. Okay? Likewise anchored in the, 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 the verse in the Qur'an, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ That transcendent is Allah, بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ In His hand resides the entire cosmos. Right? الَّذِي خَلَكَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ كَدِيرٌ Sorry. And he is able, fully able over every single thing. So first and foremost, he commences the, the verse by saying how transcendent he is. Then he says, بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ Every single thing resides in the hand of who? The hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ And he is fully able over the entire cosmos. الَّذِي خَلَكَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ Why? Right? The answer is in the verse. That he created what? Death and life. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ To try you. أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala. Who are the best in deeds? And so we get an understanding again of this world. It's a world of trial and tribulation. That's the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the world in which we reside. Therefore, when we understand these things, we can understand or have a greater understanding into what it means that... Um, when we, when we, no doubt every single person is going to face some type of what, tribulation or trial, trial in their life. Okay? If we were to ask a question, and it's a, the answer is, is, it's a rhetorical question, the answer is self-evident. Who is the most beloved thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? Who? It's Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Meaning we have many traditions that affirm this from amongst them. Likewise, the tradition of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, Abuna, our father, Adam, peace and blessings be upon him. That when he asks or petitions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, um, to overlook the, the khati'a, the error that he made, he says what? Allahumma inni asalaqa bihaqi Muhammad. I ask you by Muhammad, the right of Muhammad. And so Allah responds in hadith by saying what? Kayfa arafta Muhammad? How do you know Muhammad or Adam? And Adam responds by Adam alayhi salam, he responds by saying what? When the, the, the ruh, when the soul were, was breathed into my, into my body, and I gazed upon the qawaim of the arsh, the throne, ra'itu la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I saw that there is no God save Allah, and I saw Muhammad is the messenger of God, and I knew that we, you would never put any name next to your name, save that it's the most beloved of things to you. And he says, Sadaqta ya Adam, you have spoken the truth. And so if the most beloved of beings, of created things, is Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does it mean when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ashadda nas bala'an al-anbiya, thumm al-amthal fal-amthal. The most tried of beings are the Prophets. And then those who resemble them the most, and those who resemble them the most. Wa yubtala 
الرجل على على قدر دينه and that a person is going to be now tribulated according to what his faith فمن ثخنا دينه اشتد بلاؤه and so someone who has a strong faith the tribulation will be what more intensified and vice versa okay that's just the nature of this life this life that Allah describes as what lamhat al basar this is nothing save the blink of an eye it's a moment and if we look at even our lives right our souls existed when from the time of adam alayhi salam potentially thousands of years right when we die and we enter the barzakh the barzakh can be what again a number of years hundreds of years thousands of years yawm al qiyamah lasts for how long 50,000 years to 100,000 years depend on the verse or, or the hadith that it speaks about and then it's perpetual life either way in 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 heaven may Allah inshallah admit us inshallah amin into his rahmah into his mercy in heaven or it will be other than that right but before we die there's our life our life compared to all of those other lives is what lamhat al basr it's a moment it's just a blink of an eye but in this life no doubt it's a life of what trial and tribulation it's just how it is and if we look at for example we're saying here that the most beloved being in creation to god to allah is al mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam and if we were to take for example the simplest and i use simple for loss of a better word the simplest of his trials and tribulations so they say when he came out towards the end of his life and he had like um, his head was wrapped in a cloth because he had a headache and it was like in the pangs of death and when our mother said na aisha she goes never did i see a man in your pain like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said just the headache that he experienced in the last few days of his life if that headache was subject to a mountain the mountain would shatter that's just his headache and then if we look for example when again our mother aisha she asks al mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah was the most difficult day in your life the the day of uhud when many of your beloved companions um, were lost and he said no the most difficult day in my life was your mutaif the day of taif where he went there for a period of time and called people to islam that's the vocation of prophets calling people to islam and so he called them for a number of weeks not only did they refuse his call he was subject to verbal abuse and to the extent when he was expelled from taif they stoned him and when they stoned him sallallahu alaihi wasallam they said that his blessed sandals filled with blood sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and they say that he slipped on the stones that they were stoning him with and they picked him up to then stone him again how close were they to have stoned him and to pick him up at the same time they're not stoning him from afar sallallahu alaihi wasallam right that was the most difficult day in his life until he goes into this wondrous conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he takes refuge in an orchard and from that conversation he says what ya rabbi as long as you aren't angry with me fala ubali it doesn't bother me what happened then as long as you aren't angry with me and then when he returns back to mecca and he's with zaid ibn harith likewise someone who put himself before the prophet to take the stones of that subject of being subject to that type of torture he says ya rasul allah you're going to return back to the people that have expelled you and again what we just have been through in the most difficult day in the life of our prophet peace and blessings be upon him what does he say ya zaid o zaid inna allah inna allah inna allah allah has placed no doubt in what we've been subject to farajan wa makhraja it's an opening for us eternally what eternally optimistic bi yadi hi al mulk it doesn't exist in the hands of any other people everything is in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this understanding of trial and tribulation not just in a theoretical sense look at those that came and lived around him because we we say we meaning i'm using his name al mustafa al mustafa means what the one who's been chosen but likewise those around him were mustafa they were chosen as well right just as when we come towards the end of time or throughout history you see great women, men and women and you see those who are around them as well right so do we say that it was just him that was subject to a type of torture or tribulation no this is part and parcel of our tradition pick up there's mashallah books outside here read the shamail read the books of sirah 
to get an understanding of what those people went through, those that were beloved, right? Not people that were subject to the wrath and anger of God. People who were beloved to radiallahu anhum wa raduan. Allah is pleased with the companions and they, they with him. And so we have example after example after example. You know, if we mentioned like of Sayyidina Amar ibn Yasir, one of the companions, his whole family, the family of Yasir, right? That they tortured him a day when your Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he comes across him and he's just weeping. He's crying, profusely crying, weeping. Mada yubkik ya Ammar, what causes you to weep? And remember, Ammar is someone that the Prophet said, Inna al-Jannah tashtaqu ila thalath. That Jannah literally is yearning for three people to enter it. Yearning. From amongst them is what Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him. Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi in the Hadith and Ammar ibn Yasir. What type of human being do you have to be that paradise is just crying out for you? But look at what he went through. So when the Prophet finds him weeping, he says, Mata Yubkik, why are you crying? And he says that the, the enemies of God tortured me today, a torture that Mount Uhud could not withstand. And after they tortured me, it didn't suffice, so they set fire to my body. Imagine set, being set on fire, right? And so Mustafa says to him, قَلْبُكَ الْيَوْمِ But how is your heart today? He says, مُطْمَئِنْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ It's at rest, at peace. These are other worldly beings. That after, because what's interesting is that he said that when they set fire to his body and they said, mention our gods, Latul Uzza, the idols that they used to worship. He goes, I mentioned it because he was just the subject, being subject to the amount of torture that it's just beyond our understanding. And so when the Prophet asked him that your heart is tranquil, and he said to me, if they do that again, you can do it, you can do it again. Right? But the point being, why is he crying? He's not crying at being tortured. He's crying because he mentioned their gods. That's what causes him to weep. That he felt that he had been negligent towards his, again, disassociated to his faith. Right? From the closest to Al-Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr As-Siddiq, when he comes out one day and he finds our beloved Prophet again being tortured at the Kaaba before the house of God. And so he repels their beatings. And he says, you're going to kill a man that says, my Lord is Allah? And so they turn their, their focus on Abu Bakr. And Imam al-Nabahani says in his book of Sirah, he goes, they beat Abu Bakr so badly, you could not tell the front of his face from the back of his head. Like, for, if you want some type of understanding about what that means, look, for, well, maybe don't look. But look at, for example, the likes of Emmett Till, who was... Um, from the days of slavery, then they, 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 they tortured him and the like. You get, you, get, you get an understanding about why, how you can understand. Because if we hear that, what does that mean? I can't, take the, I can't understand what is the front or the back of his head. It's just mushy blood. Right? You cannot discern anything. They beat him so badly. And so he, he's carried to his home. And he's unconscious now from that time right up until the end of the day. And when he wakes up, what does he say? First thing out of his mouth, Kaifa Rasulullah. Kaifa Rasulullah, how is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And his mother says to him what? That he's the reason why you had, you've been subject to what you were subject to. But he's okay. Does that suffice for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq? No. He could not even walk. He goes, carry me to him. So they carry Abu Bakr as-Siddiq to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's two narrations. One that they looked at each other and they just start to cry. And there's another narration where they said, Abu, uh, that, that, look at this. They say what? فَأَكَبَّ عَلَيْهِ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The Prophet throws himself on Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. These are the things that they went through so that we can be here today being La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. This is what that generation went through. And those again, Al-Amthal Fil-Amthal. Even the likes of, for example, we take another companion, Sayyidina Khabab ibn al-Arrat, right? someone who was... Um, Again, we read these stories and they just become stories to us. You know, we don't have frames of reference for what it, alhamdulillah, may Allah keep us safe and protected, inshallah, I mean. But to see what they went through, when they would go, he was a slave and he was, um, he was a swordsman. I mean, he would make swordsmith. And to torture him, they'd go into his workshop and they'd take the iron rods that were in the fire and then they'd burn his head with it and burn his body. Now, this individual, that he went, what he went through, 
again, it's nothing, and I don't say that lightly, because it's, it's immense, but compared to what Al-Mustafa went through, again, it's nothing. And so when he goes to complain to the Prophet about, Ya Rasulullah, I mean, pray against these people, right? And the Prophet tells him of what? A people that came before, that went through real struggle and strife. Which when I read that, when I was reading the Seerah my first time, I thought, that's a really heavy response. Because look at what this person who loves him and what he's going through. No, a people came before you. And he goes through all the different types of things that they were subject to. And in the conclusion of that hadith, he says, But you are hasty. Right? Because a nasr ma, a sabr. Victory will come, but it comes with what? Patience. And all of these tribulations, I can maybe say, and I can say about the people that I've been around in the past couple of weeks, they've probably made the most sincere du'as they've made in a long time. Because these tribulations draw us back to who? They bring us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? They'll bring us, they will bring you, draw you back to God. Draw you back to your Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Draw you back to thinking. You start thinking, why am I walking on this earth? What is my purpose on this earth? Because we're all immersed in dunya. Again, we said this last night, we perfected our dunya. We've got it down. We know which schools to go to, which jobs to get, which companies to work for. But then things will happen in your life which will now make you think, is that why I exist? What is going to now draw me? These things will draw us back to your religion, draw you back to Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Insha'Allah, ameen. Right? But when speaking about our time, our time, there's a hadith which again, a hadith that we will all be aware of and all know. And it's the hadith about the end of time. That towards the end of time what happens? Right? And look at the accuracy of the hadith. Tada alaykum al ummah min kulli ufaqin. Okay? That the nations will converge upon you from every angle, every corner of the globe. They'll converge upon you. And they'll partake of you just as people partake of a meal. Right? Now, what's the response from the companions? Because it, goes, it shows us an, an insight into how they thought. They think, okay, if the ummah is just being thrown left, right and center, is it because we're just small in numbers? Because they can't think that if there's a multitude of us, Meaning, in the, in, in the campaign of Mu'ta, we had, on different opinions, 3,000 to 10,000 up against 200,000. I.e., 3,000 Muslims to maybe 10,000 Muslims who waged war up against 200,000 Muslims. Right? Non-Muslims, sorry, Jazakallah khair. And so, when they hear this hadith, that the Ummah is quote-unquote thrown about like it's nothing, well, we must be a few in number. Because if we look at other hadith, Sayyidina Hudayf ibn Iman, he says what? When, he, when, they, when they speak about the, the, biggest, the biggest fitna that will befall this ummah in the next few years when Allah wills for that to happen is the fitna of the Dajjal. And Hudayfa says what? He goes, if he came in our time, the children of Medina would kick him out. Not the men. The, the atfal, the children. They just kick him out. So their understanding is what? Well, there must be only a few of us. And what does he say? Sallallahu La. Antum kathra. There's many of you. And that's why they call this marhala, marhala guthaiya. That this is the stage of gutha, but you're going to be like what the foam on the sea. Right? Just taken. There's no thabat. But why? Because what will be placed in your hearts is this concept of wahan. And what does wahan mean? He explains it, Salah Salama. Hubba dunya wa karahiyat al mawt. A love of this world. We are so awash with all of this world and all of its quote-unquote luxuries. Like I said, whether it's the, 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 the long plans we make for schools, jobs, what the clothes we wear, the food, the products we buy, we're totally just awash with it. And now people start to think, don't they, over the past few weeks, right? what am I buying? Should I be, should I be buying this? Again, it's a rahmah drawing us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he's telling you, why is there a weakness within you? Okay? Is it because you're few in number? La. There's many of us. But our, we, our hearts are just turned purely, what? 
to this ephemeral fleeting world, this dunya which we spoke about, um, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah earlier on. Okay? Now, and then I was speaking with, mashallah, some of your children or the children that come to this blessed um, madrasa um, in the morning. And we just went through a hadith, a prophetic tradition, um, where Al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he addresses um, a young boy at that time known as Abdullah ibn Abbas. Who again he made a specific supplication for him. Allah mafaqihu fi din wa alimu ta'wil. Allah give him understanding of religion and likewise a deeper understanding of the Quran. And so he, in his older years, he was someone who the companions would go to to help understand the Quran. But when the opening words of that hadith is what Ya Ghulam. So we know that he's speaking to what a boy. Because Ghulam in the Arabic language means what someone in infancy up until the age of nine. So look at the type of conversation that our beloved Prophet has with nine-year-olds. And again, the conversation is about what? Inculcating in his mind and his heart a way of making sense of this world that adults don't have today. And she says, Inni u'allimuka kalimatin. I'm going to teach you some words. Tanfa'uk, inshallah, they'll benefit you. Allah yahfadhka. Be mindful or bring to your heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will be brought to and, and you will be before Allah. Right? Be good with God and you will find Allah before you. I mean you'll find Allah in everything. At times of ease and likewise at times of struggle. You can make sense of the world. Why? Because you're making sense of everything that takes place through the prism of this faith. Through the prism of understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihfad Allah tajidu tujahak. Be mindful of God. Bring Allah to heart. You'll find Him in everything. Right? So we see if we're speaking about the, 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 the greatest tribulated being, being our Prophet, peace and blessings upon Him, was He not also the most smiling of people? Was He not the most optimistic of people? Was He not someone who brought happiness to the hearts of people? Sees God in every single thing. And then the hadith goes on to say what? إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ When you ask, ask Allah. وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And when you seek the aid of someone, seek the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We can, quote-unquote, write our petitions to your, to your con- congressmen, members of parliament, or, or whatever. You can, you know, you can uh, uh, seek aid. There's nothing in and of itself wrong with that. But are we petitioning Allah? Where's our collective tahajjud gatherings? Where we come together before um, uh, Fajr, where your Lord says every single day, right? Not when the trials are happening, or not when things are quote unquote going well. Every single day your Lord is asking, who has a need so that I can fulfill it? Right? Who's seeking forgiveness so I can forgive him or her? Where are those types of gatherings? Those are lordly, godly gatherings. Petition Allah first and foremost. If someone's to ask me, do you want to sign this petition or do you want to come to a collective to Hajjid gathering? We petition God. I know which one I'm going to do. I know where, again, because look, he's speaking to what? Is he speaking to an adult here, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He's speaking to a nine-year-old. Get this right now. Understand this in your youth. And then that will carry with you when you go forward now in life. First time billah. And then does it conclude there? No. Wa'lam and no. If the whole corpus of humanity gather together to either give you some type of goodness or to harm you, they can't do it. Except that it's by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are these mere words? Is this a nice story? Is it a hadith that will pass by or write somewhere? Or is it something we're supposed to believe? Because he's telling you what? The entire corpus of humanity. Everyone gathers. and They want to do some good by you. They can't do it. They want to do some bad by you. They cannot do it save by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said, trials and tribulations draw us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very real sense, in an immediate sense. And then he goes on by saying what? When nasr ma'a as sabr Victory comes with patience. Just as we took in the hadith earlier, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ We want, because of the nature of our lives now, you know, you press a button and it, you order something, it's here the next day. Or you want food, it's immediate. 
you know, everything we have is just you know, al-ajala min al-shaytan. Right? This hastiness that we have, it's from the devil. These lives, our lives are hasty. There's no time to think. Right? There's no, this is, this is a, um, there's a, there's a very clear agenda about why life is like that. It's, it's, it's self-evident in relation to the type of person it will create. When you go to um, religious communities, I mean, Allah make this a religious community in the true sense of that word, inshallah, ameen. You see a level of what? Calmness, stillness. We can't even be still anymore. They've done studies that if you put people into a room with no um, distractions, phones, TV and the like, they say within 25 minutes that they start to have panic attacks. Because you're left with who now? You're left with yourself. And it's not a pretty sight, sadly. But when you're around again religious communities and you're around the men and women of Allah, you see a calmness in absolute turbulence. When the world is, quote, you know, philosopher going to hell, you don't see any type of change in how they are, right? sabr, and then he goes on to say what? fi ya'rifka fi shidda. These are all understandings that if we could live these understandings, we'd be in a much better place, because he says what? Get to know Allah. When times are going well, when we don't have, you know, subhanAllah, you know, I've traveled to, to places of the globe where I've seen, you know, what I'd class as, you know, true poverty. Poverty that will just genuinely break your heart. And when people are in those types of dire straits, you think they can think about religion. They, they can think about, you know, programs or no, they're just trying to survive. You know, it was one of the supplications of Al-Mustafa, I min al-faqr, I seek refuge from poverty. The ulama say why? The scholars say why? Because poverty leads to kufr, leads to dis- disbelief. If you can't even think about what you're going to eat, right? How do, you, how do you function? And so here he's saying what? In the same hadith, speaking to a nine-year-old, to arraf al-Allah firrakha, get to know Allah. And again, for those that have studied the Arabic language, right? To fa'al. It's a form, which means what? You have to what? Incrementally, perpetually go back and forth. You have to develop the, this relationship with, with your Lord. Not when you're tried. Specifically when what? Things are going easy. Have, make sure your lives are what? Developed so there's a relationship you have and that relationship is developed. What do I mean by that? We all, mashallah, have a particular age where we pray. And we ask, that, we ask the question, like we asked it last night, I think. Is my prayer today the same prayer as it was a year ago? Is my fasting this Ramadan, was it the same as it was last year? Is there any development? Is there any increase? Am I getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? Do I have a, a, a deeper connection to my faith? Have I learned something that's more in relation to whatever I'm studying? You have to perpetually go back to this relationship. But then what does that hadith conclude with? Does, does, did the Prophet say, يَتَعَرَفْ alayk Allah And if you get to know Allah, then Allah will get to know you incrementally. لَا يَعْرِفْكَ fi shidda. When you go through some type of difficulty, he will immediately be by your side. He will immediately come to know you. He won't take his time getting to know you. Just as you have been asked to take your time to get to know him when things are going well. Right? When you are going through a difficulty, Allah has your back full stop immediately. As long as we what? Fulfill our contract in the first half. That we get to know our Lord. We make an effort to get to know our Lord. We, ha- we have... Um, a relationship with our faith which helps us make sense of the world that we occupy. Right? Because confusion in our time is based on us what? Being divorced from our tradition. You know, and we will say, we'll, and you'll hear these things from teachers, true teachers, and you'll hear them from the students of teachers, and then people will say, okay, but now what? Right? But, the, you know, not, we just ignored everything that's been said. Okay, but now what do we do? You know, I made du'a for five minutes and I didn't answer me. What, why, what, what, what do I do now? I spent a whole five minutes calling upon Allah. But I didn't see the ijabah. So what, what do I do now? What's the, what, what button do I press to make sure that that happens? That's how we think. Because our whole lives are like that. Bismillah.
right? So realize that as people of La ilaha illallah, we are never powerless. Okay? We are never powerless. And again, look at, for example, the great campaign that took place um, from, the, from the first of what's known as the Malhamat al-Kubra of Badr. That when Badr took place, again, things which we know, things which we know, what did your Prophet and my Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, do on the night before the Battle of Badr? We forget about that sunnah, don't we? We want to hear about how the angels came down and all of the wondrous things and how, you know, people's arms were severed and the Prophet would, you know, reattach those arms and, you know, all of those stories. But what did he do prior to Badr? The whole night long. He's raising his hands in prayer. And he's beseeching his Lord. Allahumma, in tuhlak hadi al-isab falam tu'abad fil ard. Oh Allah, if you so choose to remove this small band of men, you will no longer be worshipped on this earth. And he's, pr- he's imploring Allah so much that Abu Bakr says to him what? Meaning that's enough, O Messenger of God. That you truly have beseeched your Lord. Now, the next morning, what does he say? What does Al-Mustafa say? He goes, هَذَا مَسْرَ فُلَان So and so, and he names all of that. He's going to die here, and he's going to fall over there. So it wasn't because he didn't feel victory was not coming. He's the prophet. The reason he stood up all night long, as an example to who? To us. And let's be honest. Do we stand up in prayer petitioning Allah for the oppressed, for those who are downtrodden? Because when they switch this off, what we're facing and what we're seeing now, may Allah inshallah again give victory ajil and kamil to the people of Gaza and Palestine and the like. And all of those who are oppressed that we don't see on the television. But when they switch it off, then what happens? Where are we then? When it's out of sight, it's out of what? Mind. What happens then? Will we stand up and petition Allah then? Is it, when they switch it off the TV, is it no longer happening? Oh, there's, no one uses TVs anymore, do they? Internet. Right? They say that, you know, you, do, you, know, you say, I'm going to call someone up now. They say, you have to do this now. You can't do that because those phones don't exist anymore. Right? When they switch it, however they switch it off, and it's out of your heart and out of your mind, then what? Or before, no doubt, the intensity that's taking place, no doubt, it's, it's heinous and it should break everyone's heart. But what's happened in the year prior? Was everything fine? Were we concerned then? Right? Let's be honest. Like I said, we may not have and we don't have. We don't have martial engagement, but we have prayer. Because as time goes by, by the prophetic tongue, Hatta Yasiru Fustatain, that people will be one of two groups. Fustatun Nifaq La Imanafi, a group of hypocrisy with no Iman in their hearts. Well, Fustan Ul Iman La Nifaqafi, and a group of people who have faith embedded in their hearts and no hypocrisy. Right? Which one are we? Because as human beings, we're a mix. Of what? A mix of faith and we have shades of hypocrisy. But as time goes by, with the appearance of this individual known as his title Al-Mahdi, okay, this, the, the guided one, that when he appears now before him, this is when this tamhis, this um, cleansing happens. And our teachers say what? That if you are a person, la qadr Allah, who has a predominance of nifaq, Hypocrisy in your heart that will blot out your faith. It will remove your faith. And inshallah, if you're a person of what? Iman. If you have faith that resides in your heart predominantly, it will take out any type of what? Hypocrisy. But again, are these my words? No. These things are, will happen. These things will happen. There will be groups now who are going to, meaning we can look at the world now and it's very self evidently clear. Right? It's a strange time. We are speaking about this some of the brothers earlier on, or yesterday. That towards the end of time, we live at a time when you kathib a sadiq, where you saddiq al kathib. Where people who tell the truth, people say he or she is a liar. And people who are lying, oh, they're telling the truth. And it makes you angry when you can discern truth. When we hear, we see, you read, you know, I maybe don't read a paper. The people still read papers. I'm, I'm dating myself, aren't I? Sorry. 
right? That read the news. It's going to make someone who can discern a level, it's going to make you angry because of the hypocrisy that exists. And so ours is to what? Be the best that we can. Because this wondrous people around the Imam, known as Imam Mahdi, they say what? It's going to, there's going to be a, a, a tribulation that takes place. And they say that in that day, Al-Qut Yawma'idhin Al-Dhikr That their food on that day will be what? Dhikr Tasbih wa Tahleel saying SubhanAllah La ilaha illallah And he says until they, they mention in again Sahih Muslim A particular campaign that takes place And they say what? La yuqatil bi silah wa la yarmuna bi saham That they don't fight with weaponry nor do they cast arrows وَلَكِنْ يَقُولُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ When they face the enemy, they will say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ And a third of the enemy will fall into the sea. They say again لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ And another third of the enemy will fall into the sea. And then they say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ And Allah blesses them with victory over the enemy. What type of human, how many human beings can you point to from the Ummah that if that person said La ilaha illallah, someone would just fall into the sea from the Iman of their La ilaha illallah? How many people in Gothenburg can we point to to you? Right? Again, it goes back to that nine year old Abdullah ibn Abbas. People who have been preparing for these things their whole lives, not when they see it on the news. Not when, and don't get me wrong, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not trying to. Diminish what is taking place You know, we believe that those people are going to be from the highest ranks of of Shahada Those children inshallah have a direct, you know Entrance into paradise inshallah You know, and we pray for those people and we can do by any means necessary within lawful means to support that That's not what I'm saying here Okay But I'm saying that we have to be the best that we can be every single day So when the time comes we have a spiritual resilience that we're ready in and of ourselves to pre- be prepared for those times when they're coming and they're gonna come because the first verse we just mentioned in this lesson was what <laughs> you will be tried by your Lord that's just the Sunnah of this world it's just how things go you know one level we maybe wish that things were easier well if it wasn't easy for that first generation if it wasn't easy for the most beloved being to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how is it going to be easy for anyone else by, by default? Right? We are going to go through trials and tribulations. People do go through trials and tribulations. Being Muslim right now, it's not easy. Our sister's wearing hijab, it's not easy. You know, we can tell story after story after story. Okay? That the Prophet described this time as being what? Like you're holding a hot coal in your hand. Okay. Again, these aren't stories. This, these are realities in, 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 evoked by Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Haqaiq. But if we're not, if we don't understand those signs, and if we haven't prepared inwardly to know how to, again, what are the conversations that take place at home? What are the conversations that take place with our children? Because that's the conversation between the best of creation and a nine-year-old, right? Get this right now. Understand everything is in God's hand. Understand when you ask, you ask God. When you seek help, you seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find Him in everything that you do. Right? No, oh young boy, oh nine-year-old, no. Everyone's going to try and harm you. They can't touch you. But at the same time, everyone, they want to do some good by you. They can't do it except by the decree of God. Victory is coming. But it comes with what? Patience. Right? Get to know Allah now when things are going well And trust me, when you are going through a difficulty He's got you immediately That's a conversation you should be having with your children With your wives, with your husbands, with your parents With your brothers, with your sisters right? Because that's how we make sense of the world Through Him Not through anyone else Not through any type of other understanding This is our understanding right? This is our understanding You are not powerless Right? And people need to be careful about who they oppress. Ittaqi da'watul mudloom. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, What fear? Be careful in relation to the supplication of the one who's oppressed. Because there's no hijab, there's no veil between it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
it's a direct line, right? So people need to be very careful about who they oppress. And we can all be oppressors at one level. Because when Allah will call upon the tyrants, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, right? When we think of tyrants, what do we think of? Who do we think of when we think of tyrants in our day and age? As an, as an example, Netan Yehudi, he said. Yeah? Uh, or, we, I mean, we can go on throughout history. Okay? But what did um, Al Mustafa say? He goes, Yuktab Rajul Jabbar Wala Yamlik illa Ahli Baitihi. That a person can be recorded as a tyrant and the only people he has tyranny over is his own family. So it's not just the, the tyrants that we are self evident tyrants, it's tyranny that we have within as well. Okay? That we have to correct these understandings now. And know, for example, that victory, Nasrun min Allah wa fatun qareeb. Nasrun, again, Nasrun min man. Victory, sorry. Nasr means what? Victory. Comes from who? Right? When, think about that example we just gave. The Prophet is praying all night long to the extent that Abu Bakr says, look, that's enough. But then the next morning he's telling him where every single person is going to fall. And Abdullah ibn Umar said, after the battle I went there and when the Prophet said they would fall, they went away from that more than a hand span. Exactly where he said. So he knew exactly what was going to happen. When he's getting ready to engage in the battle, what does he say? He goes, Afshir Abu Bakr. He goes, be happy Abu Bakr. Here's Gabriel and he's dressed for war. It's not good odds, is it, for the enemy? When Gabriel is dressed for war. So it's not that he doesn't have yaqeen. Right? But this victory is going to come via who? In a hadith. In a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give victory to this ummah via their weak and their oppressed. Bida'watihim wa salatihim wa ikhlasihim. By virtue of their supplications, right? By virtue of their prayer and by virtue of their sincerity. Okay? It's happening, the victory, inshallah. La shak wa la rayb. We have to be optimistic. Right? Like I said, if no one was tried like him, but he was the most smiling of people, again, it's not a story that we're sharing, it's a reality. It's a reality of immense optimism in what? The power of God. Okay? Nasrum min Allah. And then when we do this, when we have these understandings, now we understand what it means when it says, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That there's no power, no strength save with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we have these understandings, we know what that means. Again, it's not a mere dhikr. Yes, our Prophet told us to say it. He goes that it's a cure from 99 illnesses. A sarahul ham. The simplest of which is what? Anxiety or worry or sorrow. To say, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But it's a deep belief. Allah is al-qawi. Allah is a rafid, the one who raises. Allah is the one who abases. Allah is al muiz the one who gives honor. Allah is al mudhil Right? We have to know these names again to understand, to get an understanding, I should say, into our Lord. Right? And just be eternally optimistic. Because your Prophet said what? Ummati umma marhuma. That my ummah is an ummah, my nation is a nation that is displayed immense mercy. Laysa laha adhabun fil akhirah. They don't have any type of um, chastisement or punishment in the next life. In adhabu hafid dunya. That the trials or the chastisement takes place where? In this life. By virtue of like dying in natural disasters or being killed or the like. Right? That's a rahmah from Allah. And again, at a time where we speak about these two individuals again, no, well, sorry, one individual next to Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, that when they are ex- when they leave um, when they leave Mecca to to travel and migrate to Medina, and then the the Quraysh they hire a master tracker to track them down. And now Abu Bakr is in immense fear. Again, fear for who? Not for himself, for his beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? What does our Prophet say? And it's affirmed in the Quran. La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. Okay, don't, don't, don't worry, God's with you. Okay, and that's again a belief that we have to have. 
لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Don't fear, Allah is with us, inshaAllah. Right? That's how we go. We wake up with that hope, and we go to sleep with that hope. نصر من الله. No doubt. The words of the Quran are صالحون لكل زمان ومكان. They are apt for every single time and every single place. Okay, Nasr min Allah, victory will come and it's going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ours is to what? Be the best that you can. Okay, prepare your inward states. Right, be a person that subhanAllah, we said it I think last night, that um, spreads the fragrance of Islam. You know, by any means necessary. That's your job. Those are things that you can do. Right, everyone can pray. And we want to know about where those collective gatherings of prayer are. Right? Petition Allah first and foremost before you petition anyone else. And we ask Allah to give alleviation to the people of Gaza, to the people of Palestine specifically right now, but to all of the oppressed, inshallah, across the globe. And may Allah make us causative reasons to alleviate that oppression, inshallah. Wa jazahal khair wa alhamdulillah.